Coming up, we take a look at the newest avionics tech from AEA in Palm Springs. Electric airplanes are coming soon, but not in the form you might think. We show an airline that plans to electrify beavers. Plus, we go seaplane flying with a veteran of National Geographic's Alaska Survival Show. And an airliner in Times Square? We'll find out what it's doing there. AOPA Live This Week begins in just a moment. Thank you for being here to support Angel Fight West and the fifth annual Endeavor Awards. The real heroes in this equation are the Angel Flight passengers. Wow, see I told you you'd love this. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Well, there are new options for your panel and many of them are really quite cool. The Aircraft Electronics Association convention is happening this week in Palm Springs. Garmin has a host of new offers. This is the GNX 375, which is a dedicated GPS navigator and built-in ADS-B in-out transponder all in one. The box is touchscreen or knob controlled. The GPS-175 strips it down to just GPS navigation. And speaking of touchscreen, the Garmin G3X Touch is now an option for certificated airplanes. On the G3X Touch display in this setup here, we have EIS situated on the left-hand side. That is available as an option. Um, here we can split the screen, so we get a nice PFD, MFD, and EIS all on one single 10-inch display. Of course, we can also leverage the full screen display and use different shortcuts on the screen there. Garmin also rolling out the GTX 335D and 345D diversity ADS-B transponders. The 345D also adding ADS-B in. Now diversity means there are two antennas and that could be a regulatory requirement in other parts of the world. But for all the new technology at AEA, one staple of the show is turning a page. AEA President Paula Dirks is retiring, but the new advancements are keeping her on her toes. Even after 40 years, I'm still learning as because technology continues to advance and amaze all of us. Um, I, I remember back to the you know, analog instruments and, and avionics and, and Loran C. Paula started with AEA right out of college and retires with 22 years as its president. And she will be missed. She will be that. She's really turned that into a, a pretty significant organization. Right. She has. It's, uh, she's a real icon in the industry these days, and so we'll miss her. Congratulations, Indeed. Paula. When all the, the new avionics are great and they've made flying safer, particularly in the airline world, but in the wake of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 accident, some wonder if we're ceding too much control to automated systems or if we're getting the proper training on those systems. The ranking member of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee has particular concerns about the training for foreign pilots. Representative Sam Graves of Missouri told us in a telephone interview that he thinks that right now the focus should be on the pilots rather than fixating on equipment failures. Both Lion Air and Ethiopia, they were fighting the airplane, you know, all the way to the end. Why didn't they disengage? Why didn't they hit the uh, stabilizer trim cutouts? Why didn't they just disengage the system and fly the plane? Bottom line is, in every single one of us, at least in the United States, that learns to fly, if you have an equipment failure, I don't care if you're flying a Seneca or a 737 MAX, you disengage the system and you fly the plane. Some of these countries are trying to get pilots in the pipeline so fast that they're teaching them how to fly computers and not teaching them how to fly an aircraft. You can read much more in the news and videos section of our website, and you can hear the interview with Rep Representative Graves in the latest edition of our Hangar Talk podcast. And Congress is already wading into the issue of the Boeing 737 MAX. This week, the FAA was called before the Senate Commerce Committee to explain its aircraft certification process, including Organization Designation Authorization, or ODA. Now, that's where FAA delegates some certification actions to the manufacturer or other private organizations. Acting FAA Administrator Dan Elwell said it's a system that has worked very well. 
Safety is not just a set of programs that can be established or implemented. It is a way of living and working, and it requires the open and transparent exchange of information. It takes collaboration, communication, and common safety objectives to allow the FAA and the aviation community to jointly identify system hazards and to implement safety solutions. Decades of experience have proven that this approach yields knowledge that we would not otherwise obtain. FAA aircraft certification has always relied on the exchange of information and technical data with industry. Some version of our certification process has been in place for over 60 years. Meanwhile, Boeing held a big event in Seattle where it told pilots, airlines, and the media that it was making software changes to the MCAS system, including an angle of attack disagree warning as standard equipment used to be optional. Boeing will limit the amount of nose down trim that MCAS can command. The company is also revising pilot training. So this has been a real blow for Boeing. They're not used to the kind of uh, overview that they're yeah. getting right now. Yeah, and here's where the trickle down can occur for general aviation is if con mo Congress mandates that uh, the FAA get more involved and maybe do away with the ODA authorization that uh, Boeing and a lot of other manufacturers have where they have a lot of oversight. They are the subject matter experts. They know their products. They've got the most at stake if there's a safety problem that develops. Uh, and so that's how the system has worked. But if the FAA somehow is forced into being more involved, uh, that means that resources are pulled away from other manufacturers, which don't, smaller companies that don't have ODA. And that means that GA certification projects could be stretched out even further. Yeah, so, um, absolutely. You know, well one thing leads to another. Yeah, Owell said if they did away with ODA, the FAA would have to hire some 10,000 more people to work. But, you know, there's also a lesson in all of this for some of us general aviation pilots, and that is know your equipment and know how to turn it off. Right. Yeah, important part there. <laughs> well, AOPA is working for pilots in Alaska. FAA is getting ready to modernize flight service there and AOPA and the Alaska Airmen Association want to make sure our members voices are heard in the process. We are surveying the state's pilots on their priorities for flight service and service delivery improvements. So if you fly in Alaska, you're encouraged to take the survey. It doesn't matter if you use flight service or not. Go to the address on your screen. We'll share the results of the survey with the FAA later in the spring. The FAA is falling behind on protecting the air traffic control system and connected aircraft from hackers. That according to a new report from the Department of Transportation's Inspector General. The IG said the FAA has not completed a comprehensive strategic policy framework to identify and mitigate cyberspace risks. The FAA agreed to develop a plan with target dates to address recommendations to enhance aircraft system cybersecurity. Well, the 2019 Hoover Awards are a wrap, but the impact of those honored remains. AOP Alive's Paul Harrop takes a look at some of the other award winners from last week's events. The R.A. Bob Hoover Trophy Awards are a time to reflect on the values that Bob led by and honor those who advanced the craft of flight. And all of us have a little bit of Bob in our souls right now because how he touched us. And his happiness because he'd say, you people are so magnificent. I'm so grateful to be here. The most important tenet of flying is safety. Technology has added great situational awareness to general aviation, and among the greatest advancements in that is for flight. Really democratized technology. You know, you can now have with an iPad and for flight, you can have most of the same safety features that previously you would have needed a brand new airplane with a glass cockpit to get. Created by Jason Miller and Tyson Wise, it quickly evolved through the mid-2000s from desktop to iPhone to iPad. The pair receiving the General Aviation Safety Award. You know, ever since the two of us got together, safety has been the entire reason, uh, the, you know, the crux of everything that we've done. And we never dreamed our tiny little app would have the impact it has, and it still amazes us to this day. And it's just amazing to be, uh, you know, recognized this way. Because we've always tried to make an impact in our customers' lives and uh, have helped a lot of people out. It's just been kind of one step at a time and keep moving forward. and. When you look back on it and you get an amazing award like this, you just realize how incredible it's all been. The Joseph B. Doc Hartramp Award is named after AOPA's first president. 
It goes to U.S. Senator Jerry Moran from Kansas. He's been a great leader for aviation, closing the skills gap to provide more industry jobs. Moran also stands firm against ATC privatization. Aloha. Aloha. Let's try that one more time. Aloha. Aloha. You know, it's an honor for me to be here tonight. Hawaii State Senator Kai Kahele is a great ambassador for aviation. He earns his living as an airline pilot, even flying the airliner that took him to the East Coast for the event. He's honored with the Lawrence P. Sharples Award, named for AOPA's first chairman of the board. Senator Kahele has been instrumental in fighting unfair rules on GA pilots at some Hawaiian airports. For him, aviation is about inspiring young people. Uh, all over America and, and all over Hawaii to, you know, have that love of flying and, and, and want to dream about being a pilot and, uh, and uh, to take their careers, you know, all over, all over the world. And the four flight co-founders say those careers can happen. You just have to keep pressing on. There's some young guy or gal that's smarter than me pouring over code right now, dreaming of creating something. What is the advice to them? Oh, just be persistent. We've got a rule of thumb that takes three years to get something off the ground, so keep, keep going. And the path might be easier for all the people who blazed a trail honored at the Hoover Awards. At Reagan National Airport, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. You can find the full award show posted right now on our website. Just search Hoover Awards. Well, there's an airliner in the middle of Times Square. Well, at least part of one. A TWA Constellation fuselage hung out with Elmo and the Naked Cowboy last weekend. Now, you'd have known it was a Connie instantly had it still had the distinctive tritail. This video is courtesy of EarthCam. This old girl will have a new life as a retro cocktail lounge for the new TWA Hotel at JFK Airport. The hotel opens in May, and I think a Manhattan might be the appropriate thing to order when you first go into that lounge. Could be, or maybe a Sully. A sully? A gray, gray goose and a splash of water. Oh, indeed. <laughs> oh. Too soon? Too soon. Coming up after the break, take a look at what could be the world's first electric airline. And looking forward to sun and fun in Florida and going seaplane flying with a veteran of National Geographic's Life Below Zero. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. Welcome back. A first flight for a new aircraft. The Sikorsky Boeing Defiant took to the air for the first time last Thursday. It uses coaxial main rotors and a pusher prop to get a cruise speed that's two times faster than a conventional helicopter. They call it X2 technology. The Defiant is being touted as a possible replacement for the Blackhawk. Phew, a lot going on there. The future of electric aircraft might be closer than we thought, and it might not come wrapped in a sleek European composite form factor either. Harbor Air is a mostly seaplane airline in Western Canada, and they partnered with electric engine maker Magnix to start converting the fleet to electric propulsion. The partnership plans to start with an electric de Havilland Beaver later this year. Electric Beavers can fly 30 minutes with a 30-minute reserve, enough for those short harbor sightseeing flights. If successful, it will be the world's first all-electric airline. Well, Syrets pilots, you need to add something to your pre-flight. Take a close look at your ailerons. The FAA has just issued an aviation maintenance alert for Cirrus SR-20 and SR-22s that after an accident last May in Texas. The pilot lost roll control of the aircraft immediately after takeoff. Turns out the attach bolt on an aileron actuation arm had fallen off. The FAA is now recommending that pilots check for the safety wire on the attach bolt during pre-flight inspection. Cirrus is also updating its recommended pre-flight walk-around. And an important note for those of you flying with an Aspen EFD 1000 or 500 flight display, the company has issued a software update to fix an airworthiness directive issued last month. Some installations uh, could reset in flight if they got bad data from an ADSB receiver. Aspen dealers can now install the new software to fix that problem. The AOPA Foundation Legacy Society is growing. Now, the society is for members who include a gift to the AOPA Foundation in their estate plans. And we honor those members by adding their names to the recognition wall and legacy court here at AOPA headquarters. 
Now we just added a number of names to the wall. It's a way to recognize those who support the future of general aviation. I think even back to general aviation that most of us have really enjoyed in our lives, it's an important opportunity for us to protect this freedom to fly, and help future generations access aviation that we did. Let's help them, because we sure had a lot of fun during our time. The AOPA Foundation funds the You Can Fly program, AOPA's initiative to grow the pilot community. Find out more about how you can help at aopa.org slash legacy. Thinking about learning to fly? One of the things you need before you solo is a medical certificate. And we have a brand new webinar to tell you everything you need to know if you're going for a medical certificate for the first time. We designed this presentation to be solely targeted towards the idea of, so you need to get a medical certificate. So we wanted to bring you what we think you should know based on our experience mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, you know, what's involved in applying for the medical certificate, uh, what's involved with the actual exam, and then at the end we'll talk about now what. Really the most important thing that we in our world in medical certification that I think a lot of CFIs are somewhat deficient in is they don't really push the need for getting the medical certificate done early on in flight training. Soon enough. You can find that webinar on our YouTube channel. Just search for AOPA Live. It's the semi-official kickoff to the flying season. Sun and Fun starts on Tuesday. There's plenty for you to do and see, including air shows every day. The U.S. Navy Blue Angels are the headliner this year. The AOPA campus will have plenty for you to check out. You might want to visit the AOPA Programs Pavilion for some of our great programming. Wednesday morning, there's a Rusty Pilot Seminar from the You Can Fly team. Then at 1, you can have ice cream with the boss, AOPA President Mark Baker. Saturday at 1, You Can Fly Ambassador Jamie Beckett gives a talk on starting a flying club. There's a lot going on. AOPA social media marketer Kevin Cortes says you can get the inside scoop by following us on Instagram. Yeah, it's a little more behind the scenes stuff, so a little more raw. Uh, so a little more in depth stuff than what you see on AOPA Live, I think. Like, uh, you know, taking a look at how it's done and uh, seeing everybody who's there, meeting up with people, seeing another side of things. We are Fly with AOPA on Instagram. We'll also have a new episode of Flyby powered by AOPA from Sun and Fun and you can see it two days early on Instagram TV. And finally this week, we leave you with a story of a pilot you may have seen before if you watch National Geographic. AOP pilot editor-at-large Dave Hirschman ran into Eric Soliton from the show Life Below Zero at Adventure Seaplanes near Winter Haven, Florida. The tall, lanky pilot looked vaguely familiar, but I couldn't quite place him. He was practicing for a check ride at Adventure Seaplanes in Central Florida, and someone mentioned that he was on a reality TV show. That's when I remembered a Netflix series called Life Below Zero, in which Eric and his family talk about life in a remote corner of Alaska. The show is a bigger following in the lower 48, and the show also is broadcasted internationally, so when my wife and I travel internationally, we, we actually get recognized in, in Europe, and it's... Uh, it's a little bit of a confusing thing to have happen to you. It, it has been good for business. I, I'm not proud of the work that came out of it. I, I wasn't well suited to it in temperament. Um, I, I, I'm more of a private person than, than I guess I realized. And uh, my career as a, a potential bank robber has most certainly been ruined because we, we can't go anywhere without people approaching us. Eric and his wife Martha own and operate the Telerik Creek Lodge in Iliamna, Alaska, a hunting, fishing, and wildlife photography destination, and he flies a super cub there. My background's in wildlife biology, that's my education, and I'm fascinated by animals, and I just, I love to observe animals from the air, and it really gives you a, a, a real concept of, of the spatial orientation of the land and the different terrain and habitats, and and just what those animals do seasonally, how they move about. And it's a, it's a pretty incredible thing to, to get to see a large herd of caribou from the air, or to see spawning sockeye salmon in a stream from the air. It's just the whole gamut. I've lived in Alaska for my entire adult life, and there are no roads in the part of Alaska where we live, so it's a necessity to fly. It's a, it's a place of a rugged and violent beauty. Some of these fellows who uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with and, and fly with in Alaska, they're, they're operating routinely, you know, off 300 foot, uh, tundra tires, 
with a heavily loaded airplane. And you know, if you're going to do what those guys do for a living, you you better you better have your act together. I am only interested in Super Cubs. There's there's many different working airplanes in Alaska: Beavers, 185s, 180s. Well, I'm not that smart, so I you know those other airplanes they go kind of fast, and I, I need to be going slow enough that I can think quick enough to to do what needs to be done. I took Eric flying an AOPA president Mark Baker Super Cub to show him what to expect when he puts his own airplane on floats. I met these big time guys and they kind of, I don't know why I, I must have tricked them, but they offered to, to let me fly an airplane that was worth more than my life. The airplane is, is disgustingly cherry. It, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't really sure what to make of that. It, it, it looks pretty different than my Super Cub at home. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but uh, I've really enjoyed it and I, I had to resist sending a text message back home saying something to the effect of that I never wanted to fly on wheels again. What a character. Eric passed his check ride and is now a seaplane pilot. Congratulations, Eric. The Super Cub Eric flew is just like AOPA's sweepstakes airplane and you'll be able to check that one out in person at Sun and Fun next week. You know, if you weren't in Alaska, I'd think you were a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what an interesting guy. Yeah, that, no, that was a great piece. <laughs> well, that's our show for this week. If you have any comments on the show, we'd love to hear from you. Send us a note at AOPA Live at AOPA.org. And thanks for watching. We'll see you at Sun and Fun. But if you can't make it in person, we'll tell you what you missed back here next Thursday. And we leave you now with more video of seaplane flying in Florida. AOPA senior photographer Mike Pfizer captured President Mark Baker in his elements splashing around the lake in his own Super Cup. We should come aboard. Okay, skinny. <laughs> no clear? Turn it up. Yeah. <laughs>